He said he made you cry in training. He said, he said that? And I said, yeah, and he, he went off. He said he made him cry, and, and you know what I mean? I don't care who you are, no, nobody wants to hear that. He treated that guy exactly the way he needed to treat him. One of the biggest beatdowns that Daniel Cormier delivered in the octagon was against one of his old training partners. Daniel destroyed that man. Here is how the story goes. And I hear about this kid, Cummins, and claims that when he would train with Cormier, he would make Cormier cry. And that he, quote unquote, broke him. Uh, honestly, and, and, and honestly, I think, uh, I think he's really upset that he said the things that he said. I know that I can push him and he will break. Listen, I'll, I'm gonna, uh, I feel like we've gotten really close in, the, in this past week, so I'm not gonna call you Daniel, I'm gonna call you Dan. You okay with that? I know all Daniel's weaknesses. And I'm gonna beat you up on Saturday. Are you okay with that? <laughs> I'd love for you to come try. I just, I just, I think that's one of, one of his main, main weaknesses is just, you know, mental toughness. So I'm, and I, that's one of my strong suits. Now, so this is this, this is the real Rocky story right here, this kid. His name is Patrick Cummins. He was a two-time NCAA Division I All-American, finishing fourth and second at the 2003 and 2004 National Championships. Cormier was scheduled to fight Rashid Evans, but after Rashid was forced out of the fight, Cummins decided to step in, even though he only had four professional MMA fights. You know, the kid steps up and takes a fight with Cormier on 10 days' notice. Uh, pretty cool. Patrick used to train with Daniel Cormier and claimed to have made him cry after beating him while training for the Olympics. Cormier admitted that he cried after their session, but it was for outside reasons. He had recently lost his daughter and his gold medal Olympics dreams. He did beat me in a match and I said, we're going again. And the coach told me no, the Olympics are over for you, you lost. I ran out of the room, yeah, I did cry. I was pissed off. I had to put myself in the mindset that I was wrestling for an Olympic gold medal and I had given it away and then my coach wouldn't let me get my hands back on him there's just certain things that back then there were a lot of things going on in my life and he knew that after all the talk from Patrick Daniel was more motivated than ever to teach him a lesson so not only have you crossed the line you've completely put yourself in my crosshair this guy doesn't know what he's in for you know he doesn't know I want to dominate Pat Cummings I want him to feel helpless. But things that happen in that wrestling room stay in the wrestling room. Not at all. I haven't spoken to him. I, I, I don't want to speak to him. I don't really want to see him until we, we see each other at the fight. Uh, yeah, it was, it was okay, but um, I was prepared. Uh, every training partner that I had could beat Patrick Cummins, so I think I should be okay. And I'm going to beat you up on Saturday. Are you okay with that? He's going into a fight on 10 days notice against a guy that's at prepared, a guy that's peaked and he's still talking. I'm up for the fight because I respect the guy. Um, he annoys me, but I respect him. Now it's not, well, good for little Patrick. Now it's like, I'm gonna beat Patrick's ass. And then the fight happened. Perfect, perfect. The winner. By GKO! that he even hit me twice because of all the talking he did. You talk, you gotta be able to back it up. I guess, you know, what happens in Vegas stays in Vegas. I guess what happens in the wrestling training room should stay there, right? Or at least it should, right? Because look at what happens when you talk about training and wrestling. He treated that guy exactly the way he needed to treat him.